Hey folks, it's time for Twip Pro Photo Critique number 64. This is Twip. Hey, welcome back to another Twip Pro Photo Critique. I'm here with my partner in crime, Mr. Troy Miller, right there. We're gonna be diving into <laughs> today's submissions. The, the topic du jour for this episode or for this critique session was fire in all its forms it's glorious forms of fire so uh troy miller fire you love fire <laughs> right why do you love do. fire so much what is it about fire that makes you so hypnotized well it's it's mysterious and it's organic and it's extraordinarily powerful um we have you this, can say I, all those things about me i can i can <laughs> <laughs> Just Except say you don't, you don't cook my meat for me. So. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> you know, fire has always been amazing to me because if it gets out of hand, it's incredibly destructive. Right. But I can I can kind of wrangle it a little bit. And it's just it's ever changing. I don't know. I just I think it's cool. And then it goes back to the primal idea of sitting around a fire, you know, after a long hunt or whatever at the end of the day. And you, that's your TV. You stare at the fire. So yeah, yeah. that's as, that's as old as, as man. So it has. Yeah. And it, it, it's, uh, you know, it allows, it allows us to be here today. Let's just say that <laughs> fire, <laughs> fire is important. You know, I did a little research on fire and, um, you know, there's this ongoing debate. I don't know if it's a debate, Stephen Scharf, you'll know if this is a debate or not. Uh, I'm anxious to hear the community's opinion about this. Um, especially the scientifically minded amongst us. But uh, there's a debate about if fire is actually alive or not, because it has some attributes of living things, i.e. it consumes, it creates waste, it uses oxygen, it, it, uh, it has an innate desire to reproduce. You know, those those sorts <laughs> it of things. It has no desires, it just does. It just does. Well, so do we. I mean, we just do, right? So, I don't know. Troy Miller, do you think fire is alive? Is fire no. alive or just no? Yeah, that was the no. consensus. The, uh, you know, the, I don't want to say the smart people in the room, but the the people that were on the side of science and logic were saying, no, it can be alive and here's why. It uh, in order for something to be technically alive, it has to have cells. Fire doesn't have cells, <laughs> you know. And it, it behaves. It you know. Think of it like artificial intelligence, <clears throat> right? Yeah. It's like artificial life because it does things that when we see them happen, it reminds us of life. So it's like artificial, mm -hmm. um, but it has its limits. It's like artificial intelligence. It it has its limits. So yeah, yeah. It's that it's is. still cool to play with though. You can play with it. It is. It is. You know, I did learn one thing in doing the research on what's alive and what's not alive. Did you know that virus or viri are not technically alive? No, I, I thought they were alive. <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't know that I should be asking that question. You're right. Well, they're not technically alive because they don't have cells. So interesting. Hmm. And they, I believe I don't know. Don't hold me to this. And the, one of the other criterion for being alive is you have to have DNA some form of DNA in order to be considered alive. Fire doesn't have DNA and neither do viri. So interesting. Okay. See, this is not just a photo critique. <laughs> this is we this week so in biology <laughs> with, a, with a pyrotechnic focus. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Love it. All right. Well, speaking of pyrotechnics uh, or speaking of this show, we have to reveal next week's before we dive into this week's critique. Um, yes. And I think we, we kind of forced out of the last week. It's going to be water in all of its right. forms. So water can take the form of ice or steam or whatever. Right. So water, you have at it. So, Troy, yeah, I know this is this is going to be hard for you to participate in because you're you're the fire guy. right? <laughs> I've got I've got pictures of water on fire. So that's OK. <laughs> that's true. That's true. You know, the other thing, I mean, if you want to get scientific about it, you know, most living things are made of mostly water. Right. So, so you could go there. I don't recommend it, but you could go there. <laughs> you could go there. I anticipate uh, some ocean photos, you know, some some storm cloud photos and some cool stuff like that. There'll be that's ice I mean. in there somewhere. Well, ice you know, is going to be I, in there. 
I, I got to say that, that the community really rose to the challenge because there's a lot of really fun images in here that, that a lot of people spent time figuring out and, and challenging themselves to do. So they'll do the same with water. I'm looking forward to that. Yes. And you can be sure, depending on the water, that water is not alive. So <laughs> it's, but it could be some <laughs> stuff living in it, but it's not, it is not alive. So yeah, I'd be interested to know on the, on the fire being alive thing. Let me know in the comments for this this episode uh, on Twip Pro. What do you think? Is is fire alive? Can fire be technically considered a life form? I don't know. Right. And and when you give that answer, just let us know if you're a flat earther or not. <laughs> hey, what what do you got against the earth being flat? I'm nothing. I just want to. I just I'm just doing a survey. Have you seen a map? I have evidence. All maps are flat. <laughs> That's right, and that's how big Iceland is. <laughs> exactly, it's just this week. You know you're gonna hate me, Alfred. I'm just saying. I know. You do not want to be stalked by the Flat Earth Society. <laughs> I do want to go to one of the workshops or one of the seminars, though. I think that would be great. I don't know. I don't know. I don't need to go to. I don't need. I have a finite, you know, amount of RAM in my head, and I don't <laughs> want to fill it up with nonsense. I'm sorry. I'd rather put interesting, important, and and useful things in my head oh that's great all right here we go let's dive in that to this week's critique uh let's we are it. we are in twit pro my friend uh let's go up to the top here sorted by create date created the first one is by tanja de prince hey tanja tanja says a fire artist performing in a park during a nocturnal show no other light than fire and the dim violet light within the castle Take a look at this one. For some reason, my, I don't know, Mighty always takes forever to load up these images for me. And then sometimes it loads them fast. I don't get it. Maybe it's, a Maybe file it's your size. Chrome. It, it could be. It could be. Look at this. These fire festivals are so cool. Oh, I know they are. Yeah, this is really neat. I'm try I tried to figure out what it is, but it looks like he's got like a bucket with things in it. He's spinning it around. So. Mm -hmm. That is that is very interesting. I love the composition of him being intent, you know, looking up. I like directly behind him. You can see it looks like mom and maybe a son or somebody, you know, like they're just intently watching. I just I think that's so cool seeing his little van over here. Um, I would probably crop the photographer out on the right mm -hmm. because I don't want to see other photographers in the yeah. shots. You know, the iPhone maybe, but um, that to me is a little distracting. But I, I dig it. I like the uh, photojournalistic and the and the color toning of this i think this is really cool good yeah, yeah. good representation of fire for sure for sure yeah i one thing i loved in this shot was his wheels there the, the car <laughs> I see that. does that actually move like that is, that it's is like a, a little trike it's a little trike right yeah that is really cool no i dig that and also like when you when i first looked at this one when i looked at the thumbnail for some reason i had in my head that this was like a fiery like um like a Cherokee headdress with the you know how those Cherokee headdresses with all the with all the feathers on oh, them kind of go yeah, down the back yeah. it it was reminiscent of that you know but on fire so yeah yeah, yeah. oh he's got two I, I zoomed in he's got like two things he's spinning like how does that not hit the people behind him right but he's got to walk and around then, and have them all sign waivers before he starts his act and there's a lot of detail in here too, which I which I really appreciate. I mean, you can see inside the little truck, you can see this little bottle sitting outside. I don't know if that's like flammable liquid or if it's like his vodka or whatever he was drinking before he started. Is there a difference? <laughs> there's <laughs> flames and there's little torches on the ground. I mean, this is the <laughs> scary. It is. This is awesome. I know. Leaving a trail of destruction wherever he does his act. <laughs> yeah. No, this is a cool shot. Thank you, Tanja, for submitting this. All right, next shot is from our buddy, Mr. Tim Engel, who, by the way, or whom, by the way, is presenting at F64 Live coming up. Yay! Uh, he says, I forgot to post a fire pick. Am I too late? Tim yes. Engel, you are, well, yes, no, but you are not <laughs> too late. And I'll tell you why you're not too late. Because uh, I haven't been, I have been under the weather today and yesterday i was in san francisco which might be why i'm under the weather today but i was in san francisco so we didn't get a chance to record the critique until just now and it is tuesday at five o'clock five nineteen. so we're behind schedule here yeah yeah so he broke in good this is this is a fun this is a fun shot i like this 
fire is kind of an afterthought in this one, but uh, I love the I love the treatment and the model pose. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, I mean, it's part of the background. This one, like, like reminds me of like a story. Like, there should be a story behind this, or Tim should have put a paragraph or something, even if it's fictional. Of you know, whatever her fictional name is, Jane Doe escapes the murder by lighting <laughs> lighting a fire on the path between her and her attacker. So, you know. <laughs> oh man, man, this is the beginnings of Burning Man, is what this is. This is the origins of Burning Man. Yeah, or Game of Thrones, the last episode when they lit the fire pit, but the but the White Walkers made it through anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, I didn't watch it. Now I didn't know that. Oh, sorry. Yes, they make it through. <laughs> and i gotta tell you the last episode of game of thrones was and i read an article about it, it was the hardest for them to film um technically but it was also the hardest for me to watch too because it was just it was like the walking dead times 50 you know it was just craziness craziness anyway uh but good shot tim thank you yeah, yeah. Thank you for the nice from the for the here. I got a I got a chance to throw in a Game of Thrones reference into the critique. So <laughs> <laughs> look at that. All right, next shout up is from some guy that keeps showing up on these critiques. I don't know why. Let's see. They gotta, they gotta throw some work in there, you know. Fire Yes, that was what I was thinking. This looked like a backbone to me when I was looking at it. It just oh, looked wow. like a like a like a like the vertebrae and a backbone from some I don't know, fiery phoenix creature or something. It look it's because it looks it looks living. And then I looked at it again um, a couple of hours ago, and I saw a face in there, looking at. It. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I had no intention either way. Uh, it's just a mirrored image, and then in capture one, I made it blue in the middle instead of the fiery orange. It's just mm. plain with fire. Also, it wasn't burning blue like that. You actually you you changed it to blue. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, doing a linear gradient and changing the hue. And then you mirrored it, obviously. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's just a fun, it's just a fun fire shot. You know, I, I lit a bunch of stuff on fire and I didn't really like the images. And I thought, well, what can I do with those? You know, what can I do with the fire? So I thought, well, I'll mirror it and see if I can make faces or wings or something. And that was, that was where I, that's where it ended. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, if you look at it, you know, when I look at it again, I see a Mavic Pro. A Mavic Pro? I don't know. Oh, okay. You see it? There's a Mavic in there. Oh, my God. I do now. This is the Mavic on fire. Go on. That's how my brain works. Sorry. I can't help it. It just goes in those places. Very cool shot, man. I love this. Yeah, those are fun. Uh, Yeah, lots of cool comments. Yeah. All right. Next one is from Warren Luz posted this yesterday and warren says firewalks with his cannon oh and a bunch of numbers after it processed in capture one in honolulu with his canon 5d mark three look at this yeah this is what we we're talking about right those uh the fire the what, what do you call this when you when you spin fire and do the long exposure oh i don't know it's just it's the like spinning steel wool or something mm -hmm. yeah <clears throat> i know what you're gonna say though <laughs> it's because you can see me. You can see my hand. You see what I'm doing. That's not fair. <laughs> all right, go ahead. Give give us your thoughts, man. What do you think? Oh well, you know, I'm. I was just gonna say, I like all. I like the fire. I like the pattern. I like all. You know, the spray. That's super cool. Um, but I don't. You know, the whole left hand side with the feet and the photographers. We could probably just crop those guys out. Yeah. Yeah, don't, I agree. Don't. Yeah, either yeah, and need. if you needed a little space on, yeah, it feels it feels a little crowded to the right side. Like if if um, if he had panned to the to the right a little bit to bring the swirls more to the left of the frame, and then got mm -hmm. rid, got rid of all those photographers or whoever that is over there. Um, yeah, that would have been, been good. Yeah, but this is fun. This is fun to do. Whatever you do, don't do this near like a wooden boat. Not a good idea. No. Yes. The people of Monterey, California, uh, understand that reference. I think that was Monterey or one of those one of those south of the Bay Area coastal cities like Monterey, Carmel by the Sea or something like yeah. that. Yeah. I don't know where it is because I was never able to go photograph it. So Yeah, it's gone remember. now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Do you have have you ever done any shots like this? I have, yeah. Yeah. yeah? And you didn't destroy yeah. any any private property uh, or anything? 
No, no, we did not. And and it was a lot of fun. I did uh, most of the stuff that I did. I didn't do a super long exposure because I wanted it to stop, you know, midair, because a lot of times you do this long, uh, longer exposure. So the streaks, there's a lot of streaks that build up over time. So I tried to shorten it a little bit. It's it's fun to play with. It's not as easy as it looks. Mm hmm. Especially for the guy spinning it, my buddy Michael Couts was spinning the steel wool, and he got a giant blister on his finger where the rope was rubbing, and mm -mm. you know we just didn't expect that. So, yeah, yeah, that's what you get. You know what happens when you play with fire? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just saying. That saying is not a cliche for nothing. No, it is not. All I've right. been burned too many times. Ugh. Thank you, Warren Lewis, for that. That was a great shot, man. Uh, Laura Patton is up next. And Laura says, photographed during a military training exercise. Look at that. Uh, that <laughs> helicopter is entirely too close to that ball of flame. I'm just saying, I don't care if it's, if it's uh, you know, uh, an optical illusion or whatever that it's that close, but whatever. That's because that thing is full of jet fuel. I just want to go on a record. <laughs> 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 There's a lot of jet fuel in there and it, and it's, it burns. Just saying. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. That this this whole scene just makes me anxious. You see, um, chills. You see the guy hanging out of the with. You can see his leg in the helicopter. I do. That used to be me, man. Literally, we used to do that every Wednesday. We used to fly around, not with the explosions, but we used to fly around with the, uh, with the helicopter pilots and UH one ends. Uh, taking photos out of helicopters with the doors open. The only thing mm. between you and certain death. Um, or probable death was a, was a you know a flimsy cable strapped to the bottom of the aircraft. <laughs> oh man, that just again, <clears throat> that's just making me nervous. Just just looking at that, I I love I love the shot. I mean, it, there's a lot of intensity in this image, and uh, just it's just a very cool, very cool image. Um, and and I like the, the the giant flame and the small helicopter and everything. It does look to me, though, like there has been some photoshopping going on on the horizon. And it looks like I can see some repeated patterns <clears throat> on the right hand side along the tree line. I can't There's... see those. I whatever that distortion, I I just kind of chalked it up to heat distortion. Now, at the bottom, you can see where there's no where there's no grain, where there's no pixels. So oh. usually what happens is when you're cloning, depending on the cloning tool, it, it softens the pixels where you've cloned. And then I see some repeating patterns. And on the left-hand side, there's there's some definitely some cloning tracks. Oh, yeah, in maybe in the clouds there. Yeah. Yeah, and then the big one for me, and I don't know if you see it, but on the helicopters, uh, we'll call it the 9 o'clock prop, mm -hmm. uh, right where it enters the smoke, there's a weird shape right there that it – I don't know if that's been cloned or not. but it, Or it, if it, it's it, motion blur, right? Yeah, we don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's it's weird. I mean, you know, all of that all of that said, um, I love the image and uh how cool it is that you get to photograph this stuff. I think right? that's super Yeah. And mushroom cloud. <clears throat> I hope to never see one of those. <laughs> yeah. Those things put off a lot of heat, right? Like you'd be able to feel that. Mm-hmm. No, you could feel that. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah, interesting shots. I could go on and on. This is like triggering so many ex military memories. Now. <laughs> I feel like an old man about to tell stories. I'm turning to my grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Laura Patton, for this. Very cool. All right, moving right along. Armando Brooke is up next, and Armando says. Inside the Basilica of the National Shrine of Our Lady of Our Presidia um, is the largest um, Marinian shrine in the world, able to hold up to 45,000 worshipers, is a candle ship, uh, a chapel where he took this photo, and the foreground is a big tank with paraffin from the melted candles. Oh, all that's candle wax in the middle? Yeah, it took me a while to to figure that out. But yeah, you can see like on the left there's candles melted in like laying horizontally, like laying in the Yeah, let me bring it up. Intense. I'm like staring yeah. at the smaller photo. Maybe if I bring it up big it'll be easier to see. Yeah, look at that. Jeez. Yeah. There's even on the right hand side, right behind the can one of the smaller candles that are burning there, you can see there's a candle laying down horizontally <clears throat> buried and 
That's yeah. just that's just so cool. I want one of these on my tables now. I want that pattern. Well, you can do it. Do it. I can need a lot of candles. All my friends got to come over and light candles. Yeah, just make a quick IKEA trip and uh, you're good to go. <laughs> <laughs> Clean out their stock. Actually, but I it, have a lot of candles. Ooh, ooh. See, there you go. Put them to use. Yeah, this is this is very cool. It. it I didn't read the description at first. I just stared at it for a little while trying to figure it out. And I think that that's, that's really kind of the cool part of it. Um, I, I, I wish that the upper half of the image with the people wasn't so contrasty and, and the shadows weren't so blocked up. Cause I, I really think in this image, the people matter a lot because they're, they're, you know, they're lighting the candles and, and it's, it's a, it's a important experience to be able to see the humans in there. And I feel like they're kind of buried in the, heavy contrast mm. yeah they get a little bit lost in there but again it is candle lit right yeah well there's there the blue light that's coming in is coming in from the windows so there mm. is a window yeah. light too so yeah yeah wow yeah you can get lost in this image for sure huh yeah this is an image that i want to look at big um mm -hmm. Yeah, this would look very good on metal. This would be, this would be, this is hangable, you know, yeah. as many of them are, but like this one especially, because you just keep looking at it. Yeah, I actually want, I want to go there. Very that nice. is true. That was very cool. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of, a lot of macro shots in that one image right there. Like, I want to get in really close. And... Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah, you could just spend, well, I'm, I'm sure you can't just hang out in there. There's probably a gazillion people trying to get in there. You got to go do your thing and get out, but. Yeah, I would love to just have some time just to you know, hunt around and find those little little spots of detail. Definitely. All right. Brazil, Sao Paulo. Thank you, Armando. And the next shot is from Michael Morrison. And Michael says, <clears throat> he says, Queen with Envy. Of course, <laughs> it only took 52 tries to get it right behind the scenes. Um, a mixture of boric acid and heat was spread on the card front and back to get it to burn green. Um, it is an amazing color. I don't even think it's vivid enough. I don't know what the card was made of, but it kind of melted in a blob. It shot with this Fuji GFX um, 50S. Look at that. Let's take a look. Yeah, that's very cool. That is very cool. I've lit a lot of things on fire, but I've never lit cards on fire. So now now I've got to light some cards on fire. Yeah, yeah, that <laughs> is very cool. I like his intent, like like 52 tries and, and coming up with a little form, you know, to, the, or painting the card with an accelerant to, to get it to burn correctly and, you know, get it to burn to the right color. And then you got this green, contra this cool green contrasting with the oranges of the flower mm -hmm. or the fire and the you know the red against a jet black background is really cool yeah i i mean i do too and and what i one thing i, I like about it is i i see this as a as a fine art piece right like i could see these in a series mm -hmm. um <clears throat> and the the focus is handled really well across the thing so the front the top left corner is in focus the bottom right corner is in focus so there's a lot of intent that goes with it and i like sort of the, the color play between the orange flames the edges burning just a little bit and the green i would love to i, I would love to have seen more flame on it mm -hmm. um you know, maybe something on the left or something like that. I don't, I don't know. You know, it's, it's hard to say. I'm sure there's a series of these that you have to pick your favorite and go with it. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Could he have, uh, picked several favorites and, and done a composite? Could have. Yeah. You mm -hmm. could definitely do that. Just take, uh, I like this little bit of flame from this one and you know, this, this charred area from that one, but you know, in his defense, you probably you could have done that with the flame, but not the cards because he only had one deck. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I wonder, did he use all 52 cards or was, I that wonder. Just, was he just sort of, you know, giving us a, a little word game there? I want to know. You know. The only thing I don't like about this image, I got to tell you. Um, he should have worked with this model a little bit more because the expression on her face is just <laughs> not right. <laughs> all right. Michael Morrison, thank you, sir. Great yeah, shot. Yeah, that's, that's very cool. That's very cool. One of my favorites for sure. Yeah. Thomas Aaron is up next. And Thomas. he says, Linda by Candlelight made specifically for this critique. I can think of no modern technology that would exist without our having harnessed fire. 
but perhaps the first blessing bestowed upon us by fire was the ability to look beyond the darkness. Anyone need a copywriter? Mm -hmm. Spent a lot of time visualizing this shot before taking it. It came out similar to what I had wanted. 1 60th of a second, F882 millimeters, ISO 400. Oh, affinity photo. Soft box to her left, warm and soft LEDs behind her to the right to help her just barely emerge from the darkness. Darkness Took about 10 shots to dial in. Hey, Mike Morrison, 10 shots versus 52. <laughs> just saying. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I noticed Thomas changed his uh his what is his his uh his byline to aerial and drone now. Oh, look at that. Yeah. I just got that. Did he finish his certification, I wonder? Oh, I don't know. Uh -huh. I don't know. He was um you know this is this is a wonderful image i think that it's it's extremely well done i love the fact that he took the time to light this and bring in the softbox and the key light and everything else with the candle i would have really loved to see him shoot it by candlelight though i think that would have been that would have been super cool and maybe that's maybe that's what you need to do next thomas is is do it by candlelight mm -hmm. um but the lighting is handled really really well so I wonder if you have one of, of Linda looking at the camera. I think that. Yeah, would be that's a good point. I'd love to see that. Yeah. And a little bit, a little bit more candle catch light in her eye as well. Yeah. Um, one of the challenges that you have with an image like this is you have a couple different colors going on where the light is landing. So the light that's landing on her face is nice and warm because the warm skin tone, but the candle comes across as really blue. So I would probably pull some of that blue out, neutralize it a little bit, and maybe bring the exposure down on the candle. And then her left shoulder along her neck is brighter than the mask of her face. And that's just the inherent, you know, because that's where the softbox is, right? Um, maybe burn that down so it so it allows us to, to go into her face first. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. But well done. I yeah, mean, this well is a done. big this is a big step for for doing a portrait. That's a lot of work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For sure. Cookies, cookies for Thomas. <laughs> Scooby snack. All right. Thank you, Thomas, for the shot. All right. All right. So really, really cool shot. You know, the other thing is I love these shots that are just stark. I've said it before. I'll say it again. I don't care. I love these shots that are against the black background. I love that. When I, when I first started playing around with portraiture, um, I had this background from Denny's Manufacturing Company that was made of this weird alien light absorbent material that you could literally just aim a spotlight at and it would just disappear into it. Yeah. So, and it was just so cool because then, you'd, you know, you just put anybody on that and light them with one light or maybe two if you wanted to separate them from the background and, you know, maybe a, maybe a reflector for some fill and... You know, you could do a million different kinds of portraits. It was so cool. And I have yet to be able to find that kind of background again. It was like some sort of felt. It was like a felt, um, uh, what do you, what's that? I don't know. It's hard to describe. Almost like a fur, like a short fur, but, but non-reflective. Like weird. a velvet? Like a velvet. Yeah, it was like a velvet, but it wasn't velvet. Because velvet, if the cool thing about this background was it didn't, it wasn't a magnet for dust, which ruins the illusion. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, it w and velvet is a magnet for dust. And it, it wasn't. It would, I don't know, maybe they charged it somehow to repel dust. But it, would. <laughs> <laughs> it was magic. It's it like was a magic. Dirt. Yeah, it was a heresy. Magic. <laughs> uh, all right. Next shot is James Glennie. All right. And James Glenny says, fire is one of those things I'll never tire of shooting or building. It's hard to choose one photo and my plans to make a new one fell through. But I love the way flames are are licking up in this. Makes me feel all warm and cozy. Shot in Halifax, Canada. Our neighbors to the north. Nice. Yeah, these, you know, we go camping and, and this is, I, I, got thousands of photos like this because it's just it's so uh hypnotic hip yeah, yeah see there you go jinx yeah. yeah just draws you right in there right yeah i've i've tried i've tried without much success to catch the flame just as it licks off the top of another big flame you know like just the piece kind of takes off um it's really hard if you want to test how well your camera autofocuses just pointed at fire uh it's a real challenge yeah yeah so 
It's beautiful. And and it could be alive. I don't know. Just saying. Rumors. Rumors. Well, if you, know? you combine fire with wood, would that be, you know, because then, then there's DNA and there's cells. Hmm. And <clears throat> maybe there you have you to go. Have... I like it. I'm going to go with that. It sounds like the beginning <laughs> of a science fiction series. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. See? All right, James Glenny, thank you. See, uh, James, uh, let me bring this picture up. James was talking about fire, and every time he mentions fire, I mention his orange beard. Right. Yeah, you know, which is his truly orange beard is not just for men. It is, you know, maybe just for Irishmen, that beard. <laughs> so, yeah. But, yeah, but that's a truly orange beard. I love that. It's really cool. Jealous, because I can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> Next shot is from Eric Pronsky, and Eric says, uh, lava flow into the ocean. This is actually a film image taken several years ago as I was transitioning into digital. This particular year, the lava from the Kilauea volcano on the big island of Hawaii was flowing into the ocean only about 12 miles from the end of the chain of Craters Road in Hawaii Volcanoes National Park. Park rangers were very careful, very carefully guided visitors for the half mile hike to this vantage point where they could observe the lava flow. I shot this image in afternoon light, blue hour, then in the pitch black sky. This image is in the pitch black, uh, is in the black sky, uh, was the most dramatic, bringing out the tremendous color of the stream from the water. The best of the bracket exposures was 10 seconds. Wow, 10 seconds long. At F11, taken with a Minolta 9 camera with a 100 to 300 millimeter lens at 300. Even though we had flashlights, the trickiest thing was walking back to the car in the black of night over a lava field and not twisting or cutting my angle. Don't you have some stories about lava trying to eat you, <laughs> Troy? <laughs> I may. That crap is sharp. <laughs> it is. You know, and when you and when you go there, and the locals are like, "Hey, be careful! The lava's sharp." Listen. Because it's sharp. It is like <laughs> knives, right? Yeah. That's even just nature's way of saying, hey, this is new land. Stay off me. You know? <laughs> yeah. You know, even the lava that looks smooth, it's it's only smooth until your skin touches it. And then it becomes like a grater. Ugh. So, yeah, be, be, be careful. But Isn't this shot great, though? Look at this. It is just... It is just, you know, I, I found myself looking at the shot in the in the upper left, the black black of night, as he said. Yeah, um, I was wanting to see some stars up there, or oh, you yeah. know, a little, a little snippet of the Milky Way peeking through up there somehow. It would have been crazy, but yeah, this, is, probably, this is still cool. Yeah, there's probably smoke or or you know steam over there um, as well, obscuring the sky. Because I'm it's not saying there. it was there. I'm just saying well, you, know, okay, you could put you. it in there. <laughs> yeah, put a moon in there. Just drop <laughs> yeah. a moon. Every in shot there. needs a moon, man. I'm <laughs> every <laughs> shot needs a moon. <laughs> More cowbell. <laughs> More cowbell. Oh, man. I love it. See? We have too much fun doing these critiques. Yeah. No, I, I, dig, I dig this. You know, I didn't get to shoot lava when I was there because um, I was there when it was erupting and the authorities wouldn't let you anywhere near it. <clears throat> so um, I did not get to shoot lava. So I am envious of all lava shots. But I, I really love this. I You know, it's, it's neat to see and... It's not easy to shoot lava because it's bright and it's hot and all that fog and the smoke obscures the detail. Yeah. You know, so, you know, my first comment is I, I wish it was sharp, but it's probably sharp. It's just the smoke and the steam is obscuring the sharpness in around the water and stuff. So it can be very challenging, yeah. um, but a very cool abstract image. I really like it. Yeah. I want to I want to um, take a drone to Hawaii, you know, like a like my old Mavic Pro when I'm going to upgrade to the, to the new one and fly fly it as close as I can get, you know. Basically you do want to do a kamikaze mission. <laughs> <laughs> you know, cuz it's streaming images and data back to the, you know, back to the phone. So, and it capture everything there and uh, you know, just fly it to its death, getting images that will never ever be seen, <laughs> seen you know, never been seen before. So, like flying underneath lava. Wouldn't that be interesting? Like where it's pouring out and getting a shot back towards you. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't. Yeah, you you're not going to get very close, but it might last for a second. Yeah, eh, a couple seconds. A couple seconds. I could do. That would be cool. You should do it. You should definitely try to do it. Pack it in ice or something. You know, send it out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
I know, nonsense. Eric Prosky, thank you, sir. All right, next shot. It's from Craig Stamfley. Craig says, ice ball and a lick of flame. The best I could do title-wise this early in the morning. <laughs> Here you go. Should have titled it 19 millimeters. 19 millimeters? Why? Is that what well, because that's with? a 19 millimeter socket. Oh, oh, I just saw that on there. Okay. <laughs> wow. I didn't even make the connection that this was a socket rent or the yeah, a socket. A on. Okay, yeah. Look at that. Look yeah. At that. I saw that right. I saw that before anything. I saw that. Let me guess. You own some snap on tools, right? Every good mechanic does. <laughs> I thought it was craftsman. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, that's what we can afford. <laughs> this is a step up. <laughs> yeah, that's what we say we we had when we have insurance come over. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go, there you go. Look at the um, shot though. What do you think? This is kind of you mentioned this last time, right? You know, yeah. lighting lighting ice on fire. Yeah, I you know I dig it. I I really do. It's it's really neat. My favorite part of the whole image though is is the bottom. You know where the water and the flame intersect, and there's that 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 neat um, just abstract shapes and forms and stuff going on in there. I really like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I agree too. Yeah, I, I love that. I would like to see a progression, almost a time lapse, to just have it burn and then melt down a little bit over time and see what that looks like. You know, ice is quite resilient. I got I to gotta tell you, you know, it takes a lot of energy to convert um, ice back to water and then, you know, for that to absorb the heat. So you got to put a lot of heat on ice to get it to do anything. It's, mm. it's really quite amazing to play with. Well, as you told me before, when we were talking about creating clear ice there are different qualities of or different mm. different qualities of ice right like some yep. ice may be harder to melt than others right yeah and this is depending a, on the oxygen is, content i'm guessing right yeah yeah you know and, and craig's got some nice uh it's got a nice ice ball here yeah not bad not bad this is this is artwork i love i like to see this one big and again i'm yeah. partial to dark backgrounds like this so this is really cool dark backgrounds and he's got the reflection in there at the bottom isn't that very cool? Yeah, I bring I bring some of the highlights down and and you know dodge and burn a little bit. Yeah, um, make it more spherical. What do you think of the uh, what what was he using for an accelerant here for the fire? It's just like I, lighter fluid or something. You could yeah, it could be it could be anything. I mean, it, because it's burning blue, it's probably I'm trying to think. It's probably not lighter fluid. It's it could be probably like an acetone or or lacquer thinner or something. I don't know. I think I think maybe maybe lighter fluid would burn blue. <clears throat> Interesting. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to picture when I lit my concrete face on fire, it burned red right away. So that was lighter fluid. Hmm. All I'm right. gonna I'm gonna venture not lighter fluid. All right, Stanley, let us know. I have no idea, so I'm not even gonna venture anything. <laughs> Zero alcohol. Idea. Pro I'm, I'm gonna go with alcohol. Okay. Like rubbing alcohol, it burns blue. Oh, like oh, uh, like uh, isopropyl alcohol. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, Craig, let us know. We're curious. Inquiring minds want to know what your accelerant was. Yeah, and it smells good when it burns. Spoken like a true pyro. <laughs> <laughs> I love the smell of the flames, says they. <laughs> All right, next shot up is from Mark Harris. Uh, we're in the home stretch now. Uh, Mark Harris says, when there's smoke... For a while, I was experimenting with incense smoke and models. Looking back at this, I might have to get back to this. Shot with his Nikon D600. Let's take a look. Wow. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah, I've seen some yeah. shots. I was looking at this series on Instagram uh, a, a while back, and it was this guy that was doing a series of shots with prove professional vape smoke blowers. So they what? Would, yes, it's a thing. It is a thing. They were making all kinds of like weird balloon shapes and and it, all kinds of geometry with like just by inhaling a bunch of vape smoke and then blowing it out and doing oh my different gosh. things. Yeah, <clears throat> it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. See, see how old you are. Yeah, I just don't. Yeah, I'm not gonna inhale anything. Just do not say in my day. Don't say in my day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I was a young man. <laughs> <laughs> we had Commodore 64 computers, and that's all we needed. That's right. That's right. We had to burn stuff to smoke. <laughs> exactly. We used these things called lighters. They didn't Fire. even take batteries. You didn't have to charge them. They had liquid fuel in them. 
<laughs> Everybody's shaking their head now. They just they just about they just about hit the pause button. <laughs> yeah, they're like, we're out of here. We're out of here. Uh, what do you think of this shot, though? I love I the, the, I think... the symmetry and like where are these hands coming from and the the unpredictability of the smoke is cool. Yeah, the the geometry is really neat. I it, it took me a little while to kind of grasp like where everything's coming from. Um, I I I love the the smoke being in there. I wish we had bigger plumes of smoke coming mm. through, you know, mm. instead of a bunch of little ones. So like a like a smoke machine with a funnel and stuff would 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 do that. That would be really cool because then the smoke could like wrap around the hands and you could see it swirl as it covered over the hands would be really cool. Mm -hmm. um, but within within this image alone, I I would like to see a little more contrasty, a little more black, and then crop it. You know, crop it so that we don't see the arm on the right. You might have to do a little Photoshop to balance it, but I don't, I don't think we need to see the elbow. Right? Yeah, that's we, resting on the knee. Yeah, yeah. You know, amputate that arm so it looks even more abstract. You know, this mm. floating arms coming in, these hands, some weird patterns. Yeah, because really then you'll like start it. wondering: Is this the same person? And how are they? What's the rest of their body? how is it articulated to get the, the hands in this position and right yeah right yep you and, were right. and smoke is hard to it's harder to light than you would you would think you have to be at the, the correct angle and it it has to refract off the smoke so it's not just simply putting smoke on the front you can only see it by having a dark background and putting it on the back you have to backlight it yeah yeah dig it very love cool it. love it i love this creative stuff this is so cool the progression of the twit pro community uh, is is astounding. All right, next shop is from Lamb. Lamb says, "Oh, see now I'm gonna get hungry." He says, uh, "Twin dancing flames really attracted the diner's attention, um, and at the same time fired up their appetite to eat more." Theme fire title: Twin dancing flames shot with his Nikon One V One. Look at that. Are you a street food guy, Troy Miller? Nope. You're not a street food guy? <laughs> no. <laughs> You're not adventurous no. when it comes to eating stuff <laughs> from the road? No. No, I am not a, I'm not that adventurous. No, I'm very I'm very tame when it comes to my food choices. Oh man, come um, on. Barbecue roadkill is some of the best food ever. <laughs> But I, but you know what? It probably smelled delicious. Yes. So and I and I love the shot. I love how this guy is like super calm. You know, like he's not even worried. Yeah, yeah. This is this is probably the seven millionth time he's done this, so he he knows where the flames are going. And just the smallest splatter of that grease or that oil on you is just oh, it'd be so bad. Burns are bad. Mm -hmm. So great timing. I mean, the this is the, definitely the the peak of action. Yeah. You know? So it's very cool. Yeah. And the guy in the background. One day I'm going to be on the front line. <laughs> One day. So be going to be taking my picture. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wow. This is cool. I, li I love street food. I love some street food. I can't eat all street food. Um, and n native New Yorkers turn me off to eating hot dogs from the hot dog vendors in New York. <laughs> Oh really? <laughs> yeah, apparently that water is uh not changed often. So <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> and I'm like, oh that's where that unique flavor comes from, I guess. <laughs> A cool shot. Thank you, Lamb. We appreciate this. This is really cool. Post it from his Android app too. Look at that. All right. Next shot up is oh, oh this one. Uh, from Philip Robertson. And Philip said, an image made a few years ago during an attempt at the most participants in a full body burn. Especially <laughs> most people, essentially most people, uh, essentially most people on fire simultaneously. Uh, that, that last line, that got me. I mean, that literally cracked me up. I'm just like, okay, let's light the most people on fire at the same time. Humans, man. I mean, humans are always looking for ways to outdo themselves, right? And if you look in the back right-hand corner... You can't see the guy's head, but you can clearly see this guy standing back there with a fire extinguisher. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just saw him. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. It's just insane. I want, I, I want to know, know what the record is. What's the record for most people on fire simultaneously? Yeah. Yeah. You know, there's this, also a torch laying on the ground over there. See it? 
I do left, see that. On the left side. I yeah. hope the guy in the back, on the back left, isn't running, looking for the guy with the extinguisher who's just standing there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, where is he? Hey, I'm on a call. Hang on. I'll be right there. <laughs> Yeah, and there's a bucket there with a sign on it that says like two ninety nine. I'm like, what is that? Like, uh, we'll put you out for three bucks. You exactly, three bucks in the bucket. We'll put you out. That's right. That's right. Wow. No, this is this is a really fun shot. This is really cool. I mean, there's a there's a lot of abstracty stuff you could you could do with guys running around on fire. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of a lot of streak and abstract movements and stuff. Um, you know, you could you could t- if you took this image and you cleaned up like. All the distracting elements. Take out the buckets. Take out the lines on the ground. Take out the fence in the background. Take out the guy even and crop in really, really tight and darken it make it eerie. It would just be freaky. It would be like some horror scene out of a horror movie or something. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah, that was a cropping wise. <clears throat> if it weren't for that guy in the in the top right, which you can barely see anyway, I probably would have cropped out that side. Right, right. Exactly. All right, and we're in the home stretch here. Thank you, Philip Robertson. Next shot is from Mike Doran. And Mike says, NHRA funny car pilot Alexis DiGioria seen here during the annual visit of the NHRA to Sonoma Raceway. Being in the right place at the right time is a plus. Image created with the Canon 1DX and Canon 7200mm 28 L I S two six fortieth of a second ISO two hundred. He said I shot the, at F eight. He said I shot the uh, top end of the strip on Saturday. Every once in a while, you can catch an engine letting go. Yes, she got out safely. You can tell Mike yeah. Doran's a pro because there's there's an art form and a structure to writing to writing uh, captions for this stuff. Right. Right, you know? he's done that before. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I mean, they actually, there's actually, you know, there's training in the military on how to effectively write captions and what to put in oh, there and wow. what not to put in there. Yeah, and he does it exactly right every time. So, yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's uh, you know, you go to the races to see the racing, and if something catches on fire like that, it's it's not disappointing. Um, you know, it's always fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's not disappointing. Look at that. No, no. And this is neat because it's the timing is is great because you see the uh, the parachute or you know the brake parachute in the back is still open, so that car is still moving, mm-hmm. uh, which is really cool. So really good timing. I like that. I really do. Yeah, yeah it's really nice. Yep. Yeah, I dig it. I dig it. Wow, that's a lot of money though. All right. Thank you, Mike Doran. Mike always comes through. I love it. I want to see his archive. His archive has got to be just ridiculous of the number of cool shots he has and is just sitting there that he's taken over the years. That's He's got so many cool shots that we get to see. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Michael DeRay is up next. Michael DeRay says, it's really hard to be creative with fire here in Florida. Everything's you're going to burn down the state. So (laughs) I once again have to rely on my archives. This shot goes all the way back to when I sometimes still shot film, then scan the negatives. This was shot with an OM2 and a 135 millimeter Zico lens, which I still use, and probably Fujifilm, which is about the only thing you could buy at Walmart at the time. Look at that. Yeah, you could tell. You could tell that that old film because I have a bunch of this stuff that's that's shot on film and then it's digitized. Right. You know, right. especially digitized with not with scanners that aren't as advanced as the scanners that we have today. <laughs> you know? so, but this is cool. This is cool. So what is he doing? Oh, yeah. He's glass blowing, right? Yeah. So what he's doing right now is he's he's taking the piece, you know, out of the out of the kiln or out of the furnace. And usually what they do is they're shaping it now. So he's spinning it. That's a hollow tube. And sometimes there's a guy on the other end that could be blowing on it, but they roll it to keep it from to keep it round and keep it and then shape it. And that tool he has in his hand, he uses to form the shapes and stuff. Nice. You know a lot about this glass blowing stuff, Troy Miller. (laughs) I've never I've never done it. Uh, I've had a opportunity but i photographed a bunch of people doing it yeah so you never this seems like a logical step to your you know away from pottery Are you yeah uh, well you know this would be the this would be like the perfect combining of like the pottery style and fire yeah, yeah. why not 
Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't I suggest know, growing your facial hair out like this guy's. Doing, yeah, yeah, because that <laughs> seems like a liability. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Unless it's a fake beard, but yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, I love this. I love how his right hand is blurry, it, you know, because it really shows that sense of motion. He's very intense. You can see the glow of the flame in his face. Uh, it's it's really nice. It's really good. These guys move pretty quickly, and there's a lot of really hot stuff around, so it's very dangerous to be very near them. Yeah. So, but yeah. it's it's a very cool shot. I really like it. I like the presentation, too, with the key line and the black mat. I like mm -hmm. that. It's a nice finish. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Very cool. Fire! <laughs> I, keep hearing, on, yeah. I keep hearing Tom Hanks' voice in my head. So he's screaming, fire! Uh, let's see. Where are we at? Next one up. Is that the last one? Yeah, here's the last one. Is it really the last one? Yeah. Peter Levshin, yeah. Yeah. Peter Levshin. We've heard of him. And Peter says, Canon 5D3, Mark III, 24 millimeter, the color of this photo has turned to crap thanks to mighty not blaming frederick <laughs> what do you think peter hey, hey peter you spelled mighty wrong and frederick wrong but that's okay <laughs> <laughs> i know i know no whining in photography it's the best uh it's the best app he can find troy will say that it should be in black and white i cut off both the legs of people i normally stay away from flames as they can burn you but troy is a pyro to the capital M A X. Yes. Oh my gosh. Wow, look at this guy. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was looking at this and I'm just thinking, like, how do you practice for something like this? Like, like what is what does your practice day look like? You know? Mm hmm Yeah, I was thinking the same thing earlier as I was watching videos of people doing wheelies down the highway stand with standing on the handlebars you know? oh, I'm, like, I'm like how do you how do you get to the level where you're cool with doing that you know same here how do you get yeah. to the level where you know with, without just having burns over 90 percent of your body and then you're good after that right yeah exactly yeah no this is this is kind of crazy i'm not it, his neck looks really weird it looks like there might be some photoshop stuff going on in there but um it his 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 intent look at that flame at the end of that stick, you know. I'd love to see that happening. Mm -hmm. Come on, Peter. I know you have more of these that are better. What what what? No excuses. No excuses. No whining. <laughs> Peter phoning it in. Come on, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna get crap when I go in the office on Friday. I love it. That's why. Oh yeah, I have I have stuff to bring up with you about Friday at the end of this. Um. Yeah, so any any further thoughts on this one? No. No, it should be black and white. Should be. <laughs> what a perfect topic to end on. I love it. <laughs> all right, so who's your favorite? Who's your favorite victim in all of these? Oh, man. I I don't know. I'm I'm torn. I, you know, that's that third image. That one's really nice. That's a really nice image. No. Um, sorry. No. Uh-uh. Can't go you know, I, I got to say there's a number of things that, that I'm considering when I'm looking at these images. And uh, my favorite is Michael Morrison with the card. Um, I, I love the fact that it was a new creation for the for the theme. Mm -hmm. uh, I like the storytelling. I like the technical execution of it. I like, you know, there's just there's just a lot of elements. I mean, there's a lot of really close runner ups in this one. But that one is that one's one of my favorites. So. Yeah. Yeah, it is a nice shot. It is a nice shot. And he put a lot of work into it. Yeah, this one was one of the more the harder ones to pick, right? Because yeah. know, it's fire and fire is just cool inherently, you know, so that's, and we have a lot of, you know, they're all really good. So but but for me, because this one was a little bit more unique, I like the injection of the card, the queen of spades. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of cool stuff. And he played with boric acid. So, you know. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we got to give it to Michael Morrison. Michael Morrison, you are the favorite for this yeah. week's this week's uh, episode. Hey, you know what I was thinking, and um, and congratulations, Michael Morrison. Congratulations to Michael. You know, I was thinking, um, what if, like going forward, not for this next one because this next one is water. I have some other ideas that include music and stuff for future show topics or critique topics. Uh, but what if? At some point, we start allowing the winner or the favorite of this week's episode to pick a future episode. Oh, 
Yeah, let the them topic. pick the topic. To pick the topic. Oh, I like yeah, you get I the like privilege, that. you get the torch, you get the privilege of picking the next topic or the next next topic because, you know, we have to keep it like one ahead, obviously. Um, right, right. But you get the privilege of pe- picking the next next topic, you know, and then, uh, you know, go for it. And you can participate in it. So you kind of have a leg up on, you know, theoretically, if you keep winning, you could be the person that's just picking topics all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Right, that yeah. would be cool. Yeah, yeah, no, that would be that would be really fun. No, I I agree. I think that would be super fun. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah, cool. I think we'll we'll plan on that. Also, the other idea was I want to plan on doing um, music based critiques, where we give someone we pick a song at random or not at random, or maybe a maybe a member picks a song, and the community that's submitting for the critique has to create an create an image that interprets that song somehow that would be interesting especially if it's a song that's outside of your musical taste genre right so you have to listen to the song we'll post the lyrics the whole nine yards and you gotta however that song moves you if you hate it you love it it makes you cry (laughs) it makes you happy whatever you have to create an image that somehow conveys you know that either the story of that song or how that song made you feel, which would be easy with like Johnny Cash music or something, because Johnny it's, Cash, it's yeah. all story, right? So. Yeah, not too, not too easy with like trance and EDM. I don't know if that's well. Let's see, that maybe, would be hard. Maybe. Yeah, trance and EDM. You know, that'd be easy. All you got to do is like, you know, get a glow stick and. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's a okay. picture of a glow stick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Boots and pants and boots and pants and boots and pants. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, cool. So next week's topic of the critique is going to be water in water. any form, which could be, you know, water or steam or ice or anything in between. Uh, we'd love to see those shots. Uh, those are gonna those are gonna be interesting, and I think that'll be the end, at least for now, for our elemental series of critique topics, and then we'll move on to something next week. Maybe we should do an open category after after water. Just open. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well yeah. Just let it let it give it a breather. Give the topics <laughs> a breather and let people just go for it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's do that. I like that. I like that idea. Open. It's easy too. Um yeah. <laughs> it's easy to schedule. It's easy to remember. Like, what is it? I don't know. Yeah. It's open. <laughs> And I want to put you on the spot here. So in the it's somewhere on, I read one of your comments on the in the critique you were talking about giving someone I think it was Kai a uh, a walkthrough or a tutorial or kind of a loose ended capture one training. You want yeah. to do that? Why don't you do that during our, our member mixer this Friday? We should. Yeah, yeah, that way you know it's structured. Everyone can come in and. You know, we'll just sit back and let you go for it. Well, you could screen share and we'll chill, you know, <laughs> while you do your thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. We'll 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 bring up whatever challenges we have with yeah. Capture One and, and the conversion from or how to figure stuff out and we'll yeah. crowdsource it if we can't figure it out. Yeah, make it collaborative, play around. Yeah. Cause I have a bunch of questions that I'll be asking too. So good. Cool. Good. Good. Uh, That'll- all right. That's it, man. That's it for this. This critique session, any uh, any parting thoughts you want to share before we end it? No, 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 I think we're good. You know, good job as always. Yeah, yeah, very good. Thanks, everyone, for submitting and putting up with us through this. How long is this? Oh, just under an hour. We made it just yeah. under an hour. This hour of us, of our nonsense and, and chit chat. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, banter and nitpicking. Banter and nitpicking. All right, folks, we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot, Jordan. All right, see ya. Peace. This is Twitter.